Great. All right. Well, um, feel very grateful to have um, I, I'm the COO of P3. Um, we are uh, excited about what we're doing. We feel we made a um, product that uh, benefit to all marketers out there. Um, and we're making it better every day. And, you know, cathodic is something that is a hot topic this time of year, especially with it being warmer earlier in some some places. Um, it's something it seems everyone could do a bit better job at. It's something at P3, um, we give you a lot of tools to to deal with. So that again, the, how this works is it's a quick webinar, 20 minutes. Um, we're gonna talk with our experts. Um, Brent um, and Robert from Metza Tanks, and then we're going to do a quick demo. So, um, uh, of how you'd use, how you'd actually use P3 to enter information. So, Brent, maybe you could just give a quick intro. Absolutely. Good afternoon, everybody. As Kyle said, my name is Brent Kemet. I'm with P3 Propane Safety. Um, I do all everything propane related you can imagine. I've been in the industry my entire career. So I have a fair amount of experience when it comes to anything propane related. Today, we wanna to talk about cathodic inspections. Um, and as we go through that, there are certain code and regulations that are required. And I'm gonna let Robert introduce himself now so he can, we can uh, continue this. Hi, thanks, Brian. My name is Robert Kenny. I'm with Metza Tanks. Uh, we are a tank manufacturer, uh, both above ground, underground, and AGUG. And this is uh, an interesting position for me to be in because as a manufacturer, we build our tanks uh, as per ASME codes and as well as the protective, uh, as well as uh, ensuring that our tanks have the proper protective coating to be installed on the ground. And cathodic protection is usually something that we see uh, the marketers take care of. And on our side, it's very important to know that the tanks we're building are being installed properly and safely. So thanks for having me on, guys. I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so so Robert, maybe you could um, talk a little bit about the METSA and your history, um, and then maybe think you could. We were talking earlier; it was really interesting to hear you uh, also discussing how uh, your history with underground containers and how you guys have started to change your process to be able to do more of that. Well, sure. Thank you. Well, first off, Metza Tanks is a uh, family-owned company that's been building propane tanks for 40 years. We'll be 40 in one month. We're very excited to celebrate with that, especially as our 40th anniversary will be in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, now, the tank itself, we've been building underground tanks for quite a few years now. It is a uh, it is built at the same specifications as an ASME above ground with a 15-inch riser. And that is assembled with a cluster valve. The total, the total height is 21.5 inches off of the top of the shell of the tank. The riser is then um, welded. We then weld in an anode lug where you can tie on the copper cable for the anode bags. And we have, uh, and then we powder coat our tank with an epoxy finish to ensure the corrosion protection when it is, under, when it is done underground. Now our tanks, um, We've been doing them quite quite a bit, but we've been slow to grow. And uh, one of the one of the biggest reasons that we're um, ready to launch this new uh, this new um, product is with a uh, underground shroud that the customers have been asking for quite a bit. It is a plastic composite underground shroud. This is a 3D model I had I had printed up, and this is going to be you know important for us to continue to grow in this market. So we're excited to. Uh, continue to work with marketers who are interested in uh, installing METSA underground tanks and how we can be of uh, of service to you. That's cool. So and you're, you're, you guys are a little bit unique because as a marketer, I can deal directly with you as opposed to, you know, other um, manufacturers I'm going to access through a supply house. Well, yeah, that's correct, Sean. We're a, we're a pretty small company. So, for us, one of our main value drivers is to be able to be close to the marketers, to sell directly to them, and also listen to their needs. So um, we're very quick with any sort of warranty claims. We're very quick with any sort of um, any sort of um, requests, customizations, and this is the changing of our underground dome to to a plastic shroud is actually one of the most important things that 
that has come from that. Now, being close to the, the marketer, we want to make sure that, that they're using the proper techniques as well uh, in order to maintain, to, to assure that when, if and when we have any sort of requirement that needs to be attended to, that not only the tank is built to the proper standards, but also the practices the marketer uses are being controlled in the proper, in the proper way and measured as well. And for, um, so Brent, you know, what are we looking at for, um, re for our code requirements uh, specific to our underground containers, inspection, documentation, reporting? What what do we need to do? So great question. Um, so the, unfortunately, cathodic protection is something that unfortunately tends to go by the wayside in the propane industry, and I think a lot of times it's overwhelming to customers or marketers. Uh, on what to do, how to do it, what the timing intervals are. And at the end of the day, it's really not that complicated. Um, for example, there are time intervals. You have to test for uh, cathodic inspections, tank to soil potential with a copper sulfate half cell, and NFPA requires it to be done. Uh, and they give us a window based on weather, because some parts of the country, of course, when there's you know three feet of snow on the ground and ice, well, we can't get a cathodic inspection. So they give us from zero to six months for the very first reading. Um, and then of course the secondary reading would be also be a six month window of 12 to 18 months. And then if those pass, you can then place that customer on a 36 month or three year rotation. And that's providing that you have a negative 0.85 uh, reading or better or even more specific greater negative, which can be very confusing. So we're talking about negative 0.85, negative 0.90, negative 1.00, et cetera. Those would all be acceptable reads. Anything less than negative 0.85, such as negative 80, negative 70, 60, is going to be an invalid read. And we would have to do something like retrofit an anode bag to that. And if any of those inspections do not pass, then that time frame would start all over again. And the market would have to make sure they had it on a plan. We do recommend uh, you know, doing some type of a cathodic inspection schedule. For example, in the springtime, when there's moisture in the ground, having that uh, reading when the moisture is there, the snow load is melted, if you're in those types of areas, uh, or those April showers that bring May flowers, those can certainly help with getting that passable cathodic read. And then you can put together a plan to effectively manage and document, which Kyle's gonna talk about in a minute here, uh, how to keep, keep that. And, and more importantly, be reminded when you need to return to that customer's house to make sure that those cathodic inspections are compliant. Why should I care? I mean, you know, I mean, it feels like most of the industries ignored this to some degree. Some people have incrementally, my sense is more marketers are starting to do it, but you know, they could be doing more. Why does, why does this matter? So good question again. So we all know that especially residential customers is a big push in underground tanks right now. They all want some type of an underground tank. God forbid they have to look at a propane tank in their yard. So why should the customer care or why should the marketer care? Well, we all have vehicles that we drive and we all know that if I parked it underground and backfilled it with dirt, it's a ticking time bomb, meaning it's gonna rot, corrosion is going to happen. And the only way that we can manage that corrosion to make certain that it's acceptable reads before we have a propane leak, which could potentially be a catastrophic situation, you know, a large liquid leak or a vapor leak, which could migrate, find a source of ignition, become a major, major problem, loss of property, loss of life, et cetera. So that's how we do, how we manage where that underground tank is uh, in its corrosion life, if you will. So if, by taking those readings, we can effectively manage it, find out, do we need to replace it? Do we need to retrofit another anode bag to it? Or whatever the case may be. No, and yeah. also if you let me interject real quick, as a, as a manufacturer, uh, with our extent, with the extent of our product being the final, the final tank and the coating, the the warranty process, if there were to be some sort of a failure in the field, that will impact you directly in your pocket. If you're not um, ensuring that the proper cathodic protection is is, is done and the proper um, and the proper uh, measurement is being taken care undertaken, then that can complicate any sort of claims that be made in the future. Great point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, great point, Robert, and I think that's a really solid analogy. I mean, it's hard to think about these catastrophic incidents, um, but, you know, with the breadth of our market share, I mean, we do hear stories all the time of, of it happening. It's so unfortunate, especially because most of them can be avoided. Um, so, 
All right, well, I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna, uh, oh, you can already see it, I already did. I'm gonna step ahead. And um, so this is the P3 mobile service. You can see um, on the top row, we got our safeties, our photos, our cathodic. Um, we try to make this very intuitive. Uh, we're integrated with most back office software. So all the account deck's gonna come right over. We're gonna input the account number and then select the location. And now we're into the actual um, inspection. So we'll, um, what we do now is we're gonna enter the serial number for the container. Um, there can only be one serial number in P3 and that's why it's a great tool to help um, audit your tank asset tracking. Um, if we identify the container somewhere else, we'll transfer it. I'm gonna do another one where I just add, add a new one. So this is gonna be a brand new one. We're gonna add it. Um, and this works just like all of our inspections. When we see you know, what we're using, <clears throat> our toolkit that we're providing your, your field employees, our uh, dropdowns through input error reduction. You know, they can't just write in wherever the heck they want. Um, mobile professor uh, to help if they have questions on the intent of the questions and our error recognition. If they skip um, or if they um, are giving us readings that don't work, we're gonna flag them. So um, you can see all of our um, ASME containers are gonna be in water gallons. And that's something, Brent, you're talking about all the time is getting everyone to speak the same language. There is a bit of confusion over that, for sure. Um, so we can step through the actual inspection. Um, again, my mobile professor, if I have a question on any of these fields, I can ask, um, get, get a little bit more definition. It's a great self-teaching tool. And I can continue. Oops, I still have a skip. You're about to save a container and stop by inspection. Sure, you want to continue? No, go back. Make sure I get it done completely. <clears throat> now we're going to be able to. Um, if this had been a um, a reinspection, you would have seen these fields already filled. Um, but now we can in input these fields. And and you can see here um, what we do is. If this is a reinspection, you would go back in, you'd see that the initial had already taken place. So then you'd be on your confirmation. And that's 180 days after the actual installation. 18 months is the confirmation, right, Brent? And then every three years after that is the periodic. Correct. Correct. Zero and to six, I, 18, and then 36 months. I, I could have just uh, clicked on the mobile professor, but um, <laughs> so there it is right there for everyone. We're going to identify in outsides and type. And now we're going to put in our readings. And Ken, what we're seeing with this is, is, is our, a lot of people that have gotten into cathodic lately, they're like, yeah, we're doing it. But we're not, they're not examining the paper coming back. So probably they have a lot of um documentation that's really not going to uh protect them the way that it should so then we can move forward okay so this is our this is our error recognition we have a non-compliant reading again better tools for your field team help them get the job done right the first time so you don't have to go back out no highlighted red is what i need to adjust i'm going to do that and I can save and continue, um, and my data and, and the inspection's been completed. So we will see these in our, uh, this is our desktop site that I'm moving over to now. Um, here, we're gonna aggregate all of your regulatory compliance reporting and cathodic is one subset of that. Um, you can see the accounts that aren't current, no inspection, current. You can click through um, and you're able to open up the actual paperwork. So, Really try to make things as efficient as possible for our clients, better management tools um, uh, to give feedback to. You're gonna see, you're gonna be able to look at the paperwork coming in, uh, documentation coming in, making sure that it's done according to your standards. And if you have feedback, you can give people um, that feedback uh, right away. Uh, one of the ways that we do that is through our um, field performance report. and 
you're going to see here if you have any cathodic failing scores in this column right here that's going to be a specific follow-up that you can have and using it as a coaching opportunity for that um, for that team member so that's a snapshot of um of the cathodic entry and reporting in p3 with um some great um, front-end information from robert and brent i think we can um open it up to questions now so one question that we have is are there any common mistakes that you see companies make when performing cathodic protections uh, so I'll say that again. Are there any common mistakes that you see when you see companies performing cathodic inspections? Yeah, so common mistakes would be, uh, for example, the reading, that negative 8.5 that I mentioned, or greater negative. A lot of times companies get confused on what the read has to be or what the acceptable read is. Uh, some other common problems would be customer ownership. Uh, we have a spot right on our form in P3 that uh, you document who the owner is day one. Uh, and in customer's defense, sometimes they buy a home, the tank's already in the ground, they're unsure who owns it, and we all know that when they want a good price per gallon, they own the tank. The second something goes wrong with it and it springs a leak, I don't own that, the marketer owns it. So make sure you get proper documentation from day one on who owns that underground tank. And then the other thing that I'm a big fan of on our platform here, as Kyle went through it, we also give you the uh, examples of how to correct whatever those bad reads may be, meaning does it need dielectric separation, does it need an anode retrofit, whatever the case may be, it's going to walk that technician through some results on how they can make it more code compliant. And you can see on the bottom of the form here, did we have to anode fit a retro uh, in, a, in an anode bag, do we have dielectric separation of some kind? Another confusion around that to the question is what dielectric separation is, and we are spoiled now in the field. We used to only have dielectric unions back in the day. Now we have dielectric regulators, dielectric pigtails, dielectric shutoffs. So more to train on that, but there are many, many options out there. It's uh, it's not your grandfather's reporting anymore, that's for sure. Awesome. So one of the other questions we had is, do jurisdictional systems have different cathodic protection requirements than non-jurisdictional accounts? Oh, great question. So the the criteria that I mentioned before, the layout, of course, that would be for our standard uh, customers. If you had a jurisdictional site, and if you don't know what that is, you need to check with only not only FIMSA, CFR 49, but also um, your state. States can have a lot of information around what jurisdicts, uh, what designates a jurisdictional system. So make sure you check with them. But generally speaking, every jurisdictional site needs to have a cathodic inspection on an annual basis. So of course that's slightly different than the time frames that I had mentioned previous, but I can't caution that enough. Make sure you check with whatever state you're in for whatever parameters they suggest. Awesome. And the last one we have is, is METSA doing anything to improve the safety and workability for your underground tanks? Oh yeah, well, so we are in the process of building out, like I, like I mentioned earlier, the new shroud. The new shroud, is going to be um, focused with 24 by 24 inch space to increase that workspace uh, for connections and avoid any sort of unnecessary pivot um, pivots or or uh, elbows you have to put in there. So, um, you know, we've we're currently offering a very a much smaller, much more reduced area for the uh, for the space there, and um, and this is going to be a big big improvement. We'll we'll be showcasing it in Nashville. Uh, for the for the place. Well, that sounds exciting, and you can get some hot chicken here, too. By the way. <laughs> so we just got two more questions in. So this one says, "What about a tank you install for a I'm customer? We do not lease underground tanks. The one that we install now belongs to the customer. What if they leave us for another distributor? Who is responsible for the continued cathodic testing?" So it's going to be whoever is servicing that container. So in other words, if you're making a propane delivery to that underground tank, then you're responsible for those cathodic inspections. Uh, obviously, the homeowner also has a level of responsibility, especially if they own the container. That's why documentation up front is so important. Um, and there are other things that other companies have done to add a level, level of protection. Sometimes customers do not have uh, paperwork on whether or not they own the tank, but they're confident they do. Some marketers have decided to go with a 
I hate to use the word generic, but a generic affidavit that was uh, drawn up by an attorney uh, to state that the customer is letting them know that they don't have paperwork on it, but they know that they own the container. That way there's just another level of protection when that situation does arise. Yeah, that's a good, I mean, we, I think I, I, I've heard that anecdotally from people over the years saying, well, yeah, we have underground containers, but we don't own any, we don't own them. That doesn't shelter you from the obligation of, uh, of having, working with the homeowner to have cathodic testing completed. Is that, am I hearing that right from you, Brent? Yeah, and I mean, let's remember, in an emergency situation, what, exactly what we're talking about, that's when this is important. The fire department's going to respond and they're going to call whoever's servicing that tank to come out and fix the situation or remedy it. So at that time, you're not going to be arguing about ownership. You're going to be fixing the emergency situation that's taken place. That's why when it comes time to bill that customer, you want to know who owns that tank. So great question. Yeah, I think we, uh, we've, we've recently worked with some marketers to help um, make this a revenue opportunity. You know, you know, okay, yeah, we're going to do cathodic testing, but that doesn't mean we're going to give it away. Um, so I think that's that's something that a lot of there seems to be a lot of interest this spring in pursuing that avenue. And that's a great point. And a lot of companies will do an annual service on you know a furnace or a boiler. Well, they should also include some type of a marketing campaign to do this cathodic inspections on customer-owned tanks as well. A service plan, maybe. Exactly. <laughs> Awesome. So the next question we have is we use P3 from ads and their reading designations are north, south, east, and west. Is this acceptable terminology to use instead of readings one through five? I like to use all four corners of the tank rather than north, south, east, and west simply because we don't know where the container is. We don't know what those geographic measurements are. And as you can see from the form here, we have one on all four corners of the container. As an industry best practice or standard, anode bags are usually installed either directly underneath the container or on the corners of the container. So if you do your readings in the four uh, corner or the four sides of the container, then you usually uh, can, can intelligently avoid that anode bag so you don't get a bad reading. That's interesting, yeah. So then the last question that we have is a common question that we get from customers is what is the approximate lifespan if properly installed? That's another really good question. And unfortunately, it's very hard to give a, a time frame on that. We've always said that underground containers, uh, they only last as good as the, the soil that they're put in. For example, clay is a very bad environment. Clay is like putting a, a steel tank in a pond. It holds the moisture, nothing drains away. So therefore the corrosion is gonna be promoted. So as a general rule of thumb, we've always said somewhere between 30, 40 years uh, from whatever that date on the data plate is. But again, those anode reads are gonna tell us what the uh, expectation is. And we're gonna have to use all the resources that we have available to come up with a plan. What is the visual inspection on the tank, meaning what we can see, what's the date on the data plate, and what are those cathodic reads that we've been getting? that's going to tell us what that deterioration level is. What do you think, Robert, do you guys, do you guys provide any guidance on that as well or? No, uh, we do not uh, provide the guidance specifically. Um, you know, we stand behind the quality of our product, but at the same time, we depend on people, especially like you to, uh, to guide our customer base forward. Totally. Yeah, makes sense. It's the environment it's in, which is going to make a huge uh, difference on how long it's going to last. Yeah, another good point for the marketers that are listening is even when you backfill a, a container, everybody knows that we should be backfilling it with some type of a sand, but you can even get more specific. I recommend nothing but a leaching sand, meaning something that will um, cause the moisture to run away. We've all been to the beach and seen putty sand that tends to hold the moisture. So the quality of sand can also promote the uh, longevity of the container if done correctly. Yeah, wow, never thought of that. Great. Was that it, Michaela, or anything else? Um, the only other question we had was, is a tank ever too old to test? If I understand correctly, it will end up being every three years for the life of the tank. Do I understand that correctly? As long as it has passable reads, as long as those uh, tank to soil potential readings that we talked about, are above that negative 0.85 or greater negative, 
then it can stay in service. If when those readings drop or your visual inspection on the container is not looking so good, and also that other third piece of information, meaning the data plate when it was manufactured, I'm going to use all of those to come up with a comprehensive plan on when I need to replace that container before something bad happens. Awesome. And then someone just asked if you wouldn't mind repeating the testing dates for these tanks. The testing intervals? Yes. Okay, sure. So when you put a brand new tank in the ground or you do what we call a takeover, meaning you take over an underground container from an existing customer, you have from the date of takeover or installation to six months to get the very first read. And then you have for the secondary read, same thing due to weather, snow and ice, you can put it, you can do the secondary or confirmation on 12 to 18 months. Again, that six month window. And then if those pass, you can place it on a 36 month or three year rotation. And again, it's all part of our mobile professor feature in P3. All you have to do is click on the uh, question mark next to every category and it literally walks the technicians right through every single step. Great, all right, well, I think that wraps it up. Um, Robert, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, great talking with you. Brent, as always, uh, very informative and uh, Thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, we, we're going to continue to um, do this, uh, do these webinars. They're going to be short to the point, informative, and show you um, P3 related functionality. Hope everyone has a great rest of the day. Thank you. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. I really I learned a lot today and enjoyed myself. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, thanks everybody. Robert. Thanks, Brad. Thank you.